All right, now it's time for you to go off and find which data sheets are applicable to you. So that's our goal, identify the CPA, CPU and PCH as applicable to find which data sheets matter. And we have to find these data sheets because we're going to be looking at some memory mapped IO registers. Again, we'll learn more about memory mapped IO next in the class. But we need to look at some registers in order to understand whether the system is vulnerable. So some of these registers have stayed the same over time and other ones have moved around. So that means you have to have a bit of flexibility in order to find things in the data sheets. So the first thing, let's find an LPC device in the data sheets. Well, we said we don't care about this particular architecture. Uh, you could go back and look at our older OST1 class if you want to look more into this 10 plus year old system. So instead, if you happen to be running a CPU with a PCH, if you have a five through nine series PCH, we want to find the LPC device ID in what is called the PCH specification update. So you're going to be looking at a uh, data sheet that's named something like this. So the 5 and 3400 chipset specification update. So in that data sheet, there would be an element saying, you know, these are all the possible device IDs. So you're not going to like go look through every single data sheet to find a device ID. You're going to find a device ID with the tools that we'll cover in a second. And I'm just saying here, the way you would normally look it up is you'd go back to something like this and find it. I'm gonna give you a nicer table on the website to make it a little bit easier. But once you use the table, then you have to go back and you know open the relevant data sheets depending on whether the table tells you you have five through nine series PCH. This is usually one of the hardest uh, portions of the class when, when I teach it live is just getting everyone to figure out what the right data sheet is. So, if you looked something up and you just happened to get 3B08, then my table would tell you, hey, you've got a five series data sheet, and then you'd go off and grab this data sheet and you'd confirm, oh yeah, the specification update says that I've got this thing. So spec updates, say the IDs on five through nine series data sheets. On the other hand, if you have a 100 series PCH or newer, instead you would look at the PCH data sheet specifically volume one of the PCH data sheet, where there is a device and revision ID table thing. And so again, just a bunch of list of a bunch of IDs for device 31 function zero, which is our LPC device. Now, if you were to look at one of these, you would actually see that the LPC can be called uh, the, it can actually be called the eSpy or LPC device in the 100, 200, and 300 series. And then starting in 400 series and newer, it's only called the eSpy. eSpy is basically a newer technology from Intel that allows them to tunnel a bunch of different protocols through a sort of packetized data structure mechanism instead of uh, running the old LPC lines, for instance. All right, if instead my table on the website says that you have a uh, four through ninth series core CPU, what it's basically saying is that your LPC device has, you know, kind of been merged up into your CPU data sheets. And specifically, there will be what's called a CPU IO data sheet. So on the fifth generation core series thing, there's a IO data sheet. So fourth through nine series core CPUs, there will be an IO data sheet to prove that the LPC device has the particular device ID that you look up. And finally, the case four is if you're on 10th series core CPUs or later, if you have a very new machine, then you it goes back to the PCH data sheet, the on package PCH data sheet. So there's gonna be PCH data sheets and on package PCH data sheets. And that again has to do with the fact that, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's on the same package. And so again, just look up in the table on the website. If it says that you're on a 10 series newer, then you would actually go back to the 300 series chipset PC on package PCH data sheet volume one. And so, you know, this just makes me like, why Intel, why please stop moving it around everywhere? Makes it very difficult to deal with. So, how do you actually get the device ID in order to go and look it up in my table and find the right data, uh, find the right data sheets? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. 
The two most recommended ways are going to be to use either Read Write Everything or Chipsec, but I show a few others here and really just focus on what ways are mentioned on the website. These videos and slides may get out of date, but I just want to kind of overview it for you once here quick. So basically in Read Write Everything, you would select a PCI device and then you'd say bus zero device 1F, that's device 31, function zero, and then you would go to offset two displaying as 16 bits at a time. So that value right there is the value you would look up and then you would basically put that into the website. You'd search for it on the website. If you don't find it, you might have to look for, you know, what's the closest number because sometimes I list ranges when Intel reserves a range, but they don't say a specific thing is used in specific day sheet versions that I have. So yeah, you basically, you know, PCI and then 16 bit values at a time, device 1F, offset two, and that's going to be the thing. Oh good, I've got animated stuff. <laughs> PCI, 16 bits at a time, device 1F, and offset 2. That's going to be the value for your LPC device ID. No matter what hardware you're using, that will always be where the device ID is stored. Now, if you wanted to find this on Linux, for instance, you could use LSPCI saying bus 0, device 1F, off function 0, and then it would give you something like this and the 8086 is offset 0, and the 8C4E is offset 2. So you want the offset 2. And you could do the same thing on macOS using IOReg and looking for LPCB, and it would basically give you the same kind of thing. It would say PCIe 8086, that's just Intel's ID at offset 0, and then a particular device ID, A313 in this case. And then the way that's preferred is to use chipsec, whatever operating system you're on, whether you're booted off of a USB, whether you're in Windows, whether you're in your Linux, run pseudo Python, chipsec util, PCI read zero, so that's bus zero, device one F, that's 31, uh, function zero, offset two, showing two bytes, and here it'll show you 8C4E. And it actually shows you up there and down there. Now, if I hadn't made this table for you on the website, what you would typically do is you'd go to a website like PCI IDs, and you would just go to this big text file full of PCI IDs. You'd search for your particular ID, and it would tell you something like, oh, this is a Q87 Express LPC controller. And that would be your hint that this is an 8 series PCH. And then from there, you would go look at the 8 series PCH data sheets. But again, I've you know provided on the website the translation from these values to the relevant data sheets. And here again, you won't necessarily find your exact device ID on my table or even in these PCI IDs thing because Intel reserves particular ranges and they don't necessarily always say that they're in use. So for my you know last generation T2 Mac, uh, it says A313 and that just straight up does not exist in the PCIe device IDs. You may be able to find it in some you know, open source pro, uh, projects, et cetera, but I, I can tell you it's not actually listed in the data sheets for the relevant thing. So in that case, you look for you know, what's the closest thing, you know, Cannon Lake PCH, uh, and then you would you know, look up the Cannon Lake PCH data sheets. And if you did that, then you would find something like this in the 300 series data sheets. It actually says Intel reserves device ID A300 through 31F, and consequently the A313 is within that range. So you'd know, okay, yes, this is the right data sheet. But again, as you can see, it doesn't actually list this as a specific thing that's in use. And that's why this is one of the most difficult portions of the class when taught in person, because I have to run around and try to help everyone figure these out. All right, now it's time for you to go to the website. You know, so first use one of these tools. The tools will be listed how to use them on the website, uh, and it'll tell you how to find your device ID. Then you use the device ID to do the mega manual lookup, and that'll tell you which data sheet is relevant for your LPC device.